Now we'll be adding some content to our page and of course as usual we'll want to make this responsive. I've gone ahead and collapsed my header area along with the navigation that we have on our page. We're going to begin by making a section and on this section I'm going to go ahead and add a class of container. Inside this section we'll just add an h1. I'm going to add a class here and we're going to go ahead and center align our text by using the class of text-center. And in addition to that, I'm going to have this text use the display formatting, and we'll use a display of five. And as you can see, it's gonna look like this. Then we'll make a div. This div is gonna hold all of our available trip articles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a class of row to this. And then let's add some gutter spacing. Let's try G3 for gutters. Then I'm going to create several articles. In my articles, I'm going to create classes of call-md-6, which will allow my page to change to a two-column layout at medium screens. And then at large screens, we're going to go to a three-column layout. So we'll use call-lg-4. And then finally, at an extra large screen size, I'm going to have it go to four columns. We'll use call-xl-3. Inside our articles, let's have h2s. This is going to be followed by a paragraph. And then we're going to create a button where we'll want the user to click and visit a page that tells more about this. So I'm going to place the button inside of a paragraph, and we're just going to make a link. In order to style the button, I'm going to use the class of btn. And then we'll use btn-dark, and the text is just going to say, learn more. If I save right now and we refresh, you're going to see this is kind of what the content is going to look like. All right, now I just need to repeat this multiple times. So I'll just go ahead and create about seven more articles. Now if I re-refresh my page, you're going to see that here at the medium size screen, I have two columns. If the screen is smaller than the breakpoint that we have specified, it's the layout is going to switch to one column. And then of course, as the screen gets bigger, it will go to three columns and finally four columns. And let's go ahead and just change the color of available trips and add an underline to that. If we come up to the H1, we can add a additional class of border dash end. That's going to create a border on the bottom. Let's also add some margin on the bottom. So I'm going to use MB-3. And then finally, we'll change the color of this text. And let's just use the Bootstrap text primary color. And let's see what this looks like. I'm going to save this. We'll refresh. And everything looks pretty good except for my border on the bottom. Oh, I used border end. That should actually be border bottom. Let's just make that quick correction right there. We'll refresh, and now you can see there's a border that just creates a little bit of separation between these elements. Let's go ahead and just add a footer to the bottom of our page. So I'm just going to come down to the bottom underneath this section. We'll add a footer element. Inside our footer, we're going to go ahead and just create a paragraph. It's simply going to say copyright. And let's add a class of text align center by using text center and now if we refresh our page you're going to see how we have the copyright that's appearing down below. I'll go ahead and add a class of small which is going to do the same thing as if we wrapped the text inside of the small element. It's just going to reduce the size of the text. And the final thing that I want to do is I'm going to modify my navigation. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make the navigation so it sticks to the top. So let's go back up to our navigation area, which is right here. And we'll go ahead and add a few more classes to this. If you want to have your navigation be sticky or stick, we can go ahead and add classes that will allow it to behave in that sort of way. I'll go ahead and I'll add a class of sticky dash top. And if we save our page now and refresh, you'll see that 
the page looks fine, but as soon as we start to scroll, the navigation is going to stay stationary. It's going to stick to the top of the page. So this is a great way that you can have your navigation stick to the top and it is going to scroll with the page until it reaches the top. So this would work if the navigation was in a different location. We can also achieve the same sort of thing by using fixed dash top. The difference in fixed dash top is not going to really be apparent in this particular example since my navigation is already at the top of the page. But if we do fixed dash top, you'll see that it behaves in the same way. The only difference is that we need to add some margin on our body because you can see how the hero image is kind of getting sucked underneath the header. If we wanted to do that, we'd have to add a little bit of margin to the body to prevent that from happening. And then finally, we can also stick the navigation to the bottom. So if we go ahead and use fixed dash bottom and refresh our page, you can see that the navigation is now at the bottom of the screen. If we resize our screen to invoke the hamburger menu and we click on the hamburger icon, the menu is going to slide up so that we can still take advantage of being able to use the menu. So those are kind of some fun things that you can do with your navigation. I'm just going to change mine back to sticky dash top. And as you can see, we now have built out a responsive web page using Bootstrap and taking advantage of many of the different features that are available using this framework.